Hello, traders. Gary Wagner here. Approximately 1:45 in Honolulu, 6:45 in New York on Monday, October the 18th, 2021, and this is uh, the daily report for gold and silver. We saw modest declines in both gold and silver today, with gold trading off a little over three dollars. The key is it's still in the downtrend. So on today's show, what I want to do is take a look at gold through the eyes of different types of charts. Not only a candlestick chart, but a Hankinashi, a three-line break chart. And I think that that collectively, along with an updated Elliott wave count, will give you, our viewers, the best idea of what areas to look for. Gold did close lower when compared to Friday's close, although in terms of the net change, it was nothing like the carnage we saw on Friday. However, it did have a lower low and a lower high. Gold traded to a low today of $1,760.30, a high of $1,772.50, and closed in New York at $1,764.50. We currently have a trading overseas at $1,764.80. Silver gave up 12 cents in trading with the December contract currently fixed at $23.22. It traded to a high of $23.49, a low of $23.03, and is currently trading overseas at $23.235. This first chart is a candlestick chart daily of gold futures. We have a Fibonacci retracement set that starts at the flash crash, of course, that began in August. Gold was trading at 1678, up to the most recent high at 1836. This allows us, with the combination of moving averages, the ability to define current support and resistance levels. We are going to begin with the resistance level should the market reverse and begin to trade higher. If that is the case, there's an area in which we have the 38 0.2% Fibonacci retracement, along with the 50-day moving average, extremely close together. And that, to me, is always significant when you have two different technical indicators moving or pointing to the same data point. And that would be $1,776 and $1,778, respectively, based on those two moving averages. It's not that far away from the market, but the next one above that, and where I believe you have major resistance, should the market trade higher, occurs at 1800 The 23.6% FIB retracement is 1799.40. And when we look at the 100-day moving average, that's in green. That comes in at 1798.80. So that's where I would be looking for resistance if we had some sort of reversal. Current support, again, is in two basic areas. The first one is based on our shortest-term moving average, a 21-day moving average, currently at 1764.30. And just below that, at 1764.30. 57.50 is the 50% retracement. Those would be the key and critical areas I would look for on the upside as well as the downside, whether the market reverses here or continues to track lower. The chart we are currently looking at is the identical chart we were just looking at, only it is in Japanese average or Hankinashi format. The key difference between the two is how the open is created. The open on a Hankinashi is simply defined as the midpoint of the prior candle. So it tends to smooth out moves in the market. What we look for in a particular downtrend is the absence of upper wicks because what that says was that at no time during the trading session did pricing go above the midpoint of the prior candle. The longer the stronger the trend. We really use it for trend definition. It's a little too early to tell, but all I can say is that this is Friday's candle here. It was a strong down day, but on a Hankinashi, it appears as a doji because the close was at the midpoint of Thursday's candle. We would call that a pivotal candle. Today's candle, of course, has a moderate length in terms of the body of the candle, and today has just started, so we won't count that. But it does appear, at least for now, there is a distinct possibility of a pivot to the downside after seeing the market rise last week. We are looking at a three-line break chart. It is another Japanese-style chart 
Key difference with the three-line break to a traditional bar or candle chart is it takes out the element of time because new boxes or candles form when there is a price change after X days, in this case, we're looking at a three-day change. The projection is drawn in magenta here, and that's this, and it is projecting lower pricing. The last chart that we do want to look at is a daily chart with an Elliott wave count. What is interesting about this chart is when we look from the onset of the flash crash, August 9th, you can see the number five here, and then it proceeds to a new count. A one, two, three, four, and five. Of course, that is a bull count. We also get a bull correction, an A, a B, and then we get our final C. But here's what's interesting. At these lows that came in just above 1720, and that is this part right here, you notice that it goes back to a bear count. In other words, we have an A, our B, and our C. And what that means is if this is correct, we will get a five count, but a bear count five, meaning our first one will go down, two will be up, three will be down, and so on. And so, in the case of the short-term Elliott Wave count, it is projecting lower pricing. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you tomorrow for the next daily update and review. Bye-bye.